So yeah, how have you, how did you not see the too many cooks thing? Because I fucking avoided it, man. <laughs> oh, you are a too many cooks hipster. It just, it like everything on the internet was about this too many cooks thing. And I'm like, well, I don't, and I almost tweeted today, like, what the fuck is too many cooks? But I was already tweeting about my nine-year-old nephew setting up my brand new phone for me and not knowing what the MTV EMAs were. So I'm like, you know what? I've, I've really showed my age enough today. Thank well, you. now you know what too many cooks is. Yeah, I do. Waiting for my name to pop up down here. I hated it so much, my hair shrunk. It did. <laughs> Just waiting for people that I don't think it has anyone even and people didn't even notice yet. Which is weird because half the time I get on the air and people are like, oh, look at your hair. Oh, look at your makeup. Oh, look at your glasses. I'm a little oh. disappointed in all of you. Green screen Mountain Dew. Oh, God. Did you see the thing with the Mountain Dew flavored Doritos? Mountain Dew flavor. No, Dorito flavored Mountain Dew. Yes. Yes. Although I'm sure the opposite will be available soon, too. But yeah, they're they're taste testing Dorito flavored Mountain Dew. It just in case someone raises a good point, you can just make your name here below you. I can. You have that power. But just in case you didn't have the time, if it was taking too much effort to both eat the chips and drink the soda, now it's a time saver. You can just do both at once. I just, I don't even like Doritos in their solid form. <laughs> they kind of gross me out. You know what's the worst part about Doritos? I can't imagine imbibing them in liquid form. The worst part about Doritos is when... It'd be like drinking them after you threw them up. <laughs> if you bite into them just the wrong way, they become these little bladed shards in your mouth. You've never gotten, like, a Dorito stuck in your gum line? I don't eat you? Doritos. I think they're gross. Well, I... I yeah, you got a Dorito like shoved in between your tooth and your gum and you can't get that shit out. It's oh God. I've gotten the half a popcorn kernel stuck in your throat. Or it's like, have you ever had this where it's lodged in? So it's like it's like a stone inlaid into concrete. So it's smooth. So you can't fucking move it. <laughs> I'm loving all the sharp edges are dug into your flesh. I'm loving this right now because everybody's going, why are we watching? This is just making me uncomfortable. Let's talk about my leg hole. <laughs> this is how we start the show now, apparently. Let's gross you out for 10 minutes. <laughs> Let's play what's grosser than gross. Well, you and don't, then do horrifying news stories. Well, you and don't, maybe, if you're really lucky, there will be a kitty. You don't have a leg hole anymore. It's gone. Mostly. I mean, yeah. he, that doctor fucking tried to make a new one. But you're almost all better now. He took tweezers, giant tweezers, and was like, well, there's nothing left. Well, there wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't a minute ago. Stop trying to make leg hole happen. Yeah. And then he ripped a bunch and like you know part of the process is he rips off all the scabbing well then i guess cool. he was feeling it so he just started ripping off skin and i'm like i need that <laughs> are need you that. sure i really like to keep it like look i like you too you, you're a great doctor you seem like a good let's just have lunch <laughs> like you don't gotta give me a you don't gotta keep this wound going so i'll come see you like let's let's just get lunch sometime uh so are we ready for the bullshit now that what's grosser than gross is over yeah can we make that a new segment that should be a new segment start the show what the fuck is wrong with you what's grosser than gross yeah. what's happening with bridget today someone told me that we should do a segment on like a day in the life of bridget and i'm like every day in the life of bridget is pretty much the same be like 20 minutes of a cat asleep. Then. Like she sleeps. She jumps on the furniture she's not supposed to. She eats. She steals whatever food I'm eating. She goes back to sleep. She plays some fetch. Like every day is pretty much the same. That's not really a segment with any longevity. Well, let us get our intro up here. Each week... 
Cast from the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And have you gone Christmas shopping for your nephew yet? No. <laughs> I just, what the fuck was that? That just sort of dread in that tone. No. no. See, here's the thing. Like, he really, really wants a drum kit for Christmas. <laughs> and my sister and brother-in-law really, really do not want him to have a drum kit for Christmas. <laughs> and I'm the cool aunt. So it's kind of my job. What's your address? A drum kit. But, what, what's your address, Tara? But I also live here, so it's also kind of my job to not piss off the people that let me. So I'm really Let's torn. See, music123.com. I'm really torn. Is the express shipping option okay? Like, I'm really, I'm really <laughs> in a dilemma here. Like, well, awesome man, homeless. Does he do that thing when you, like, go into the store and you, like, see something? He's like, oh, can we get this? And, and your mom, your, his mom's just like, yeah, okay, get it, whatever. Just put it in the cart. He mostly gets pretty much whatever he wants. This is one of those things, and I, I have to... And have he's a, not spoiled. Like, he's not a little jerk about it at all, which is lovely, because he's spoiled as hell, but he doesn't act like it. When I was a kid, I would ask my mom for stuff. Like, we were in the grocery store. There'd be, like, one of those stupid little... Remember the little magnet fuzzy wuzzy thing where you could make, like, a yes. beard? I would be like, oh, I want one of these. You can make you with that. <laughs> Can we have a contest? And she'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. Well, this is one of those things that it, 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 it kind of went into a bad place. Princess Wan reveals image of girl cutting wrist. Oh, no. What is even the fuck here? I'm going to put this up on the screen. This is the toy, all right, that she bought, that the, the lady bought for her little girl. It's called Evil Stick, but you wouldn't think that because it looks so nice and there's a little anime character. It looks like, you know, but then you take, you see that little silver foil bit there? Yeah. You take the little silver foil part off and that's what's underneath. The little girl from the ring? Apparently. Or just that. Ah, uh, um. The store told owner told WHIO TV the toy is called an evil stick, so the mother should have realized what she was buying. Bullshit! Look at that! How is that a toy? That is what the fuck is happening there? <laughs> you know, it, but, t, 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 what the fuck? How is that a toy? Oh, what's the magic in that wand? What? Do you point it at people and they commit suicide? What is the intended market? And if so, can I have one? <laughs> now I see the magic. What's the market for this? Th Who is sitting around the, the marketing meeting going, you know what? Wednesday Adams? This is a cool one. I think we're going to sell a lot, but you know what would make it sell more? Self-harm imagery. I think that's where the kids are these days. That's, that's where the money is. And it's in such a cheerful pink flower. It is too. It's like, you know. Although the flower is kind of that off shade of pink, usually flesh. reserved for generic feminine hygiene products. Yeah. It's, it's... So this whole thing is confusing. I mean, Jesus Christ. That's. If you're a little girl, you're like, I'm having fun. Oh, this is coming. Ah! This is trauma. This is this fucking thing is traumatic. Who designs this toy? What is the what's what's the process of designing this toy? What's the what's the animus here? The store owner said he would take the wands off the shelves if he receives more complaints. We're complaining. Take them off the shelves. I'm really interested. Like, you know how toys always have, like, a little blurb? Yeah. What's the blurb on this? I want to know what the blurb says. Like, some fucking copywriter. I don't... Uh, uh, let me see. I, I can try and read it. Um, some poor fucking copywriter had to write a blurb about why you should want to play with this toy. At the very bottom, it says... I think I says, I can send out 
the luster and the beauty. Oh, so this is a Hellraiser thing. <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> it's a little army of princess pinheads. <laughs> I will send you the luster and the beauty of pain. Jesus Christ. Where's the My First Dungeon? I don't. That's the next logical progression, isn't it? This is just way beyond messed up. Like, Dominatrix Barbie? Oh, but wait, but wait, we have more fun with kids. And I say that in the loosest possible term. I really hate when those terms like that happen on this show because it's never really fun. Did you ever run away from home? And by run away from home, I mean when you were like preteen, like a little adolescent, and be like, I'm leaving! And like go down the street. I made it to like the end of the sidewalk. I did that. I think everybody's, I'm not coming back. You like pack a little bag with like stuffed animals. Nothing practical in there no. at all. It'd be like a stuffed animal and some G.I. Joes and maybe a box of animal crackers. And that's all the shit. And you're like, that's all I need for the world. I'll be fine. Well, this next story is about a kid who did just that. And he... Do you have an evil stick? Because that might be all you need if you have an evil stick. No. Oh. He and he managed. He was gone for six days. To Ikea. <laughs> this is from Shanghai. A 12-year-old boy who went missing after being told off by his mother last Monday was found by police yesterday afternoon in an Ikea store. Did he make um, friends with the monkey? <laughs> that needs to be a Pixar movie. Peng Yijian, who is said to have survived on supermarket free samples while missing... He's now being treated in the hospital because he was weak with, hu with hunger. He's receiving an intravenous drip. His father, surnamed Peng, said his son has hung about in the city during his six-day period he was missing. When he felt hungry, he went to the supermarkets and took some free food samples they offer. What are, all the, what are the elements that are always in a Disney Pixar movie? No parents. Funny animal sidekick. You get this kid. Fine, maybe he runs away from home, but it's Disney, so actually his parents have to have a tragic death. And he winds up living in the Ikea, <laughs> where he meets a monkey in a shearling coat. And they form a bond that transcends time and space. And they have adventures, and they sing songs, and they eat Swedish meatballs that they knock off of mean old men's laps. That has to be better than Cars, at least. It, it will be number one Christmas uh, weekend movie. All right. I want to. Here's the thing I, I don't understand. <clears throat> Say you're working in the Ikea. And for a week, this same 12 year old boy is in the store every time you're there. You know how big Ikeas are? But <laughs> be like. Man, they just keep hiring them younger and younger these days. No, it would be really easy to hide in an Ikea. They're really big and they're sectioned off into like a million little... Have you ever been in an Ikea? Yeah. It's a labyrinth. I'm amazed anybody gets out. Yeah, I, 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 I like that ping guy. He's always working. Does he do overtime? He's really industrious. <laughs> Every time I'm here, he's here. It's I like it. It's entirely possible to be in there for six days and not have the same person see you twice. Or did they think that, like, this kid was, like, a really big Ikea fan, like an Ikea groupie? Well, there's also, when you work retail, you also learn that there are people that think that retail people are there to watch their children. Yeah. And that just drop their fucking kids off at the store for the day. It's entirely possible the employees thought it was a situation like that because... It happens. Like, and don't don't do that. Don't ever do that with your kids because no. retail people aren't paid enough to give a shit. Also, why would you leave your children with people you have you, you don't know nothing about them? 
you don't know the first fucking thing about these people. Why would you trust us with your children? Well, they've they've got a name I tag. Retail. Do you want me watching your children? You do not. They've got a name tag. I know who they are. Hmm. That's we used to Bill. Put fake names on our name tags. <laughs> Why? Because we had. I won't say at which job this was. We had too many people with the same names. So we just kind of created stripper names for ourselves. And so we all had fake names on our name tags. One, because it's kind of creepy when customers know who you are and you don't know where, who they are. So we all just kind of created personas and made stripper names. And two, because we had too many people with the same names and it was getting confusing. Okay, what was yours? Grace. That's a stripper name? Because I had big red curly hair. And Will and Grace was on TV at the time. Oh. So they dubbed me Grace. Uh. Now I guess it would be Merida. So one of the important aspects of any successful criminal enterprise is, of course, the getaway plan. Yes. And you would need to know and coordinate who all was involved in this to successfully facilitate your leaving the scene of the crime. Well, there's fucking that up, and then there is fucking that up in a spectacularly magical fashion. Suspected burglar mistakes officer for getaway driver. Oh. Uh, how do you say that? Puyallup? Puyallup? <laughs> wow. I guess, yeah, pull y'all up. Pull y'all up. Pull y'all up. Pull y'all up, Washington. It's the getaway driver. Pull y'all up. 33-year-old man was busted last week while stealing a refrigerator from a vacant home because he mistook an officer's patrol car for his getaway ride. According to charging... Stealing a refrigerator. Yes. According That's the... big. That is big. According to the charging doc documents, an off-duty uh, Pierce County Sheriff's officer was driving... Uh, when he stopped to talk to a woman, he saw leaving the driveway of a home for sale. The woman, who the officer had, has contacted in the past, reportedly told him she was visiting someone at the neighborhood house and needed gas. According to the charging documents, the officer wished the woman luck and was turning around the driveway when the garage door suddenly opened and a man, later identified as Elias Pettit, walked out. Pettit reportedly admitted he had broken into the house in the process of stealing a refrigerator when he heard the officer's car, which we thought was his friend arriving with her vehicle. Okay. According to the charging documents, Pettit saw the friend offered him $100 to break into the home and steal the fridge. Hurley said he's never done something like this before. No shit. But was broke and needed the money. Uh, Pettit, who One of my friends just put something on Facebook today that said, I need three people that are willing to earn $100 and possible internet fame without asking questions. That's not suspicious at all. Right? I immediately was like, oh, so you're going into porn producing. I know, seriously. Good on you. Good job. Let me know how that works out. But maybe he just needs a new fridge. Pettit, who admitted to using meth to give him courage for the burglary, said the woman stopped by the officer uh, was the friend who had recruited him for the crime. Nice little looping around there. Okay. And, and see, I can see, I thought like he saw the car and got in it, and that's really stupid. If you just heard a car pull up and you couldn't see it, I can see where that would happen. No, but I mean, if, like, he, if he saw the car, it's like, hey, there my ride's here, and just jumped in. It's like, let's so go. You need, like, you need like a go word. Yeah. You need a, like, the eagle has landed type word. But I, I love that gave him meth, used meth to give him courage. All right. Dutch Why courage. Are you throwing big sausage pizza at me. What does this have to do with big sausage pizza? I don't. I don't know. Dutch courage is one thing. Meth courage. That's not a good thing because whereas Dutch courage might give you, you know, the the, the relax you enough to walk up and talk to a girl or something. Meth courage will give will relax will relax you enough to walk up and scream obscenities at a penguin. That's how that works. That happens every week in Gotham. It's funny, usually Data Pinkett. Funny. Yeah, nothing good is going to come from meth courage. No. You'll have the courage to do things 
you never imagined and probably shouldn't have. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. No, I'm not. No, you're not. Walking on air for two seconds, kind of like Wile E. Coyote. Now I'm, believe it or not, I'm kissing pavement with my brain. We've got another misuse of 911, which I think I gotta say, this is the most original misuse of 911 story we've ever had. I kind of got a hand to this guy. We've had people who have called up because they got the order wrong at the drive through or they wanted their money back for something. This dude, I think he took it to a whole new level. This is kind of awesome. Um, police, man played saxophone to 911 while drunk. Oh. A man who police say called 911 repeatedly out of concern for his cat found himself on the wrong side of the law this week. The man also serenaded emergency operators in some of the calls. Uh, Plains Township police said they went to a residence on Seminole Street late Tuesday morning uh, in response to a report that a man had called 911 more than 20 times. The man, I later identified as Charles uh, Chulada, uh, told emergency dispatchers that his friend had gone to jail that morning and his cat was trapped at his friend's house and needed to be set free. That hey. makes, okay, sure. Police allege that Chulada was under the influence of alcohol. Officers warned Chulada to stop calling 911, but he continued calling the emergency number and played his saxophone for emergency <laughs> operators who answered the call. Well, <laughs> maybe he thought they needed, like, noir detective music. <laughs> Well, you're thinking noir detective, but the first place my went, my mind went to is, you know, wa na 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 na. Little Kenny G. Okay, I was like, I know that. Why do you know that? What was that Songbird Kenny G? Yeah. See, I was thinking like, I don't know how it would go, but you know, like Maltese Falcon, like. Sleeping noir music, like yeah, trying to inspire them to find that cat. Computer Ronan has a wonderful point. Normally, you're not supposed to provide your own hold music. No. That's that's not how that works. And <laughs> is the cat okay? <laughs> I think that's the most important question here. I, well, you know, maybe I'm thinking, he's dr was there a cat? Because when you're drunk, you're sure of shit that you're not entirely sure may or may not be so. Maybe cat is a code word. <sighs> maybe he left his artificial vagina for his fleshlight or wh whatever. I'm just fucking friend's with house, screen right And his now. friends went left um, town and he, you know, got a little excited and was like, well... <laughs> this is not how you get your demo out there. And that you know? kind of goes with the sax music too, doesn't it? I think I know what happened here. Maybe give somebody a link to your YouTube channel. Don't just call them up randomly and start playing shit. Well, at least not the police. They're not going to put you <laughs> there. Hey, have you, I need to get to this cat, by the way. This is my, oh, this is, this is the new cut off my new album. <laughs> Here. No. Nope. No, you're gonna sit on my work stuff. Yeah, she's Here. like, "Fuck you." Yeah, pretty much. Again, we, we've have a, we have a lot of shit turning on its head tonight. Um, normally, when these we have these um people breaking into other people's houses drunk and doing random shit, it's always kind of unsettling. This. Well, what about that? Would it be? I'm about to show you because this is kind of. <laughs> Strangely heartwarming. And I, I emphasize strangely. Woman allegedly breaks into house, hugs homeowner. That's not creepy to you. Casper police arrested a woman Wednesday after she entered a stranger's home and sat in the living room drinking whiskey. Um, Sonona Marie Hank is charged with public intoxication, open container and malicious mischief. Police responded at about 7 a.m. to a house on North Lowell Street. Woman reported she went outside to carry her trash to the dumpster, and when she returned to her apartment, 
she found a woman she did not know sitting in her living room. The woman told the intruder to leave. Hicks stood up and hugged her, telling the woman she loved her. She finally so left. She's, and I love you, man drunk, clearly. <laughs> she finally left the home when the woman's husband entered the room. <laughs> How is this not unsettling again? <laughs> Because I'm missing the part where this is not she, lo she loves you. That's the thing. She loves you. Oh. I love you. Great. Get this, the fuck out of my house. This is not how free hugs work. No. Okay? Free hugs are an option. You offer it up to people and perhaps they take you up on it. It's not a home delivery service. No. You know, it's, just, well, and that would be a fun home delivery service. You could like order in hugs, although that's probably some level of prostitution. But it should be, it should be optional. And you should want, you shouldn't just get unsolicited hugs. I'm here to tell you, people that give me unsolicited hugs, getting in need of the nose. Okay, but Tara, of all the I've done it before. Of all the things people have done that we've seen, drunk and breaking into someone's house, you have to admit, this is probably the least horrible. I don't know. Because <laughs> this one involves them touching me. <laughs> uh, I mean, there was the one guy that broke in and cooked breakfast. That seems okay. Yeah, but it wasn't for someone else. It was for him. Fine, you get him arrested and then you eat that breakfast. <laughs> That's just natural selection. You, you really don't like to cook, do you? Fuck, no. <laughs> uh, Am I not a hugger? No, I'm, I, I, I'm a hugger. I'm fine, but... I, I prefer you to have my permission to hug me. And if you don't have my permission to hug me, like if I don't reciprocate the hugging action, you need to back the fuck up. Otherwise, I'm going to knee you in the balls. That's just the way it is. There you is, can't hug people who don't want your hugging. There it's is just impolite. There is never a night of drinking that ends with random huggings and proclamations of, I love you, that there is no, your dignity is gone. You, I don't think Tara knows how to respond to someone hugging. I well, hugged all the time, okay? Yeah, but not some random person in your house. Right. I, 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 I'm not anti-hug. I'm anti-home invasion hug. Look, guys. And you're, I don't think that's a controversial stance to take. You're a great audience. I don't audience. think that makes me frigid. Guys, you're a great audience. I adore you tremendously. But if you showed up to my house and, and without me knowing and just started hugging me, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. That's just how that goes. Bad things. I keep a super soaker full of hydrochloric acid just for these kind of occasions. She's not kidding. Am I? No. It could be. It's no bullshit. And lastly, this last one is, again, falls into the category of what happened to the old drugs? All right. I'm asking you honestly, Tara, because I do not know what the fuck is Molly? I know this. Oh, God. What is Molly? <laughs> Molly is, it's MDMA, which is, it's a new, like, highly concentrated form of ecstasy. Okay. It's, it's kind of, like, more potent than a former version of ecstasy. It's like ecstasy 2.0. And you're going to find it at your average music festival. I hope I don't. And it's killing people. Yeah, I really hope I don't because if this is if this is the sort of stuff it it you know it kind of gets people to do. Uh, there were yeah. like two people that died from Molly overdoses at a New York music festival last summer. Teen pops Molly, steals ambulance, and masturbates at police station. ABC. Wasn't Seven. that a wasn't that a Seth Rogen movie? ABC News reports Stefan Sorlin, 18, went to a Halloween concert where he took Molly and cocaine. <gasps> According to police, emergency officials treated the intoxicated student who was suffering a seizure. When they came outside with the patient, 
they realized the ambulance they arrived in was gone. The vehicle had a GPS system that was tracked to Loveland, Colorado, where police say they found the ambulance. How far? Okay, guys, find out for me. How far is Loveland uh, from um, Colorado State University? That's the thing you guys need to remember. Like, you steal a cop car, you steal an ambulance, they can find them. They have trackers and radios and low jacks. Local cops say they found the ambulance in the middle of the highway with a number of doors left wide open. They also noticed heavy front end damage and fluid leaking out from the car. One officer said it looked like the driver crashed in the raised media, jumped the curb, hit a sign, and went the wrong way. Authorities then found Sortland standing about 30 yards away from the ambulance, wearing an EMT vest, and shot him with a stun gun when he refused to listen to their commands. The teen had a blanket, a cell phone, and a box of wheat thins on him. Sirlin admitted he stole the ambulance from Colorado State University, uh, but refused to answer any of the questions. He did ask, however, why are the lights flashing on the car? He was then taken to the Loveland Police Department where he... And that's when you look at the drugged up fucking douchebag and go, you're not. All lights. <laughs> because he deserves that. At the police department, he, quote, stood on a bench, kicked a wall, and masturbated. At the same time? Like, was he doing the thumper thing? Like, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Is that a thing that happened? What thumper thing? <laughs> You know, like if you... I know Bambi! I don't know that in regards to mass. What do you know that I don't? So much. Obviously. No, you know how, like, if you scratch a dog behind the ear just right, his leg starts to thump? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's a thing that happens to dudes. During his... hit just the right spot, it happened in Austin Powers. That's a movie! Well, art imitates light. I'm not, saying, I'm, a, I'm not saying this is something I've experienced. I'm asking. During his, maybe that's what happened here. During his interview with cops, Sortland said his friends and roommates, quote, were dead in heaven and had committed suicide. Police looked into the friends he was talking about and found both were just fine. <laughs> you know what? Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I feel like hallucinogens and uppers aren't things you should mix. Number one. There are things you don't combine the shit. Pick your high. Pick the one you're going for. It's not a mix. People that did Adderall and painkillers at the same time. And it's like, yeah, here's the thing. Eventually you do that to your brain. It's just going to stop. Because it doesn't know whether to be up or down, because it's both. You're just going to stroke the fuck out. Just pick one. Pick one. Don't be greedy. You can go up, then down. You can go down, then up. Don't do them both at the same time, man. Secondly, this does not sound like a fun drug. Mine is basically, like, super ecstasy. Well, that already doesn't sound like a fun drug because ecstasy apparently makes you want to rub up on strangers and that nothing good comes out of that. Doesn't booze do that too? Well, no, there's rubbing up on strangers and then there's rubbing up on strangers. Yeah, doesn't booze do that too? So that already... We've been, we've been to gamer cons. So, well, you're not a girl. You don't know. Booze does that too. I'll just fill you in. But already, just... The, the premise of ecstasy alone does not sound appealing to me, but you take that and you multiply it. That's not a road I want to go down. I, th- mm-hmm. how, this does not sound like a fun drug. That, that thing's like too many cooks out Because <laughs> this sounds like, okay, we, we've determined, we need to start a chart to figure out what combinations of drugs do what, because apparently Molly and cocaine is the home version of Grand Theft Auto. 
Except he wasn't home. Well, no. But it's like, if you turn your entire world into a sandbox game, the bad maybe, way. But there you go. Maybe he, maybe he was masturbating in the cell and trying to kick the hooker to death to take her money. Because Grand Theft Auto. I think you cracked it. I think, well, either that or the thumper thing. Jed says, I don't remember Grand Theft Auto letting you masturbate. Hot coffee, anyone? Um, no, seriously, this is, I, I, oh my God. Why, what happened to the, what, they don't mention what concert it was. Oh, almost certainly some kind of electronica. <laughs> Like fucking Skrillex or some bullshit like that. Oh, I'll bet you cash money it was a fucking dubstep concert or some shit. See, that says quite a bit about that genre of music. When this, this is, is what we love you, Tara, you go there. That say, this says something. Why make the big bucks. This says quite a bit to me about that genre of music because if you need to go to this lengths to enjoy yourself at that concert, the music's not very good. And you just explained the Grateful Dead. <laughs> Yes. Oh, fuck yeah. How many fucking drugs? You, want. you no. can yell at me all you want, hippies. That shit is true. Now, how many fucking drugs did you have to be on until you started going, wow, Jerry Bear's fucking genius? Mm -hmm. Do you know they have Grateful Dead songs on Rock Band? Talk about the most infuriating shit ever. 13 fucking minutes of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's why drugs exist. So yeah, if if th that's 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 the first thing we've learned this week. If the music were really that good, you wouldn't need to be that fucked up. Mm -hmm. That's all we need to say about what your musical tastes are. The less fucked up you need to be to enjoy it, the better the music is. That that's the scale. We've learned that. What did you do? I ripped out my own headphones. Oh. We've learned that uh, hugs can be great and all, but surprise hugs mm. don't. It, that, that's too much of a surprise. Well, not, I mean, you can surprise someone with a hug. It should be somebody that you know. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be the fact that the person is there at all. Like, you shouldn't surprise someone whose home you've invaded with a hug. Yeah. Although I'm sure there are worse outcomes to this sort of scenario. Yes. And yet. We've learned. We've learned yet another bad use for 911. <laughs> Viral marketing for your new hit single. Well, if your new hit single is a saxophone solo, <laughs> you're already off to a question to start. I hate to tell you. We've learned that always make certain of the getaway plan. Oh, your people are threatening to request the Grateful Dead next week. Yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> Fuck, what Grateful Dead song do you people know that isn't Touch of Grey or Casey <laughs> Jones? Come on! You know, those two songs, that's the fuck it. Fucking fetuses. Um, well, it was David. He's older than us. Well, still. Um, we've learned uh, that Ikea... That's a Can way of you... life, apparently. We learned that I should write for Pixar. You should. You totally should. Finally, tonight, we've learned to be careful what toys you get your children because. Yeah, they may be a little different than what you actually they, intended. They may summon the Cenobites. What the fuck was the fuck? Who the fuck? I'm still just baffled. By who the fuck thought, yep, let's make this mass fucking production. Best idea ever. Pin 
Pinhead. That's all I got for you. Pinhead, that's all you got. My God. Read the name of... Yeah, Evil Stick. It sounds like the name of a really, really bad sex toy. It looks like the color of a really, really bad sex toy. That's what I'm saying. Although God... like store brand tampons. Although seriously, God help you if you can get that in you. (laughs) Well, that'll be next week. (laughs) 